Uh, the world of wrestling. You can talk about match, you can talk about show, talk about wrestler, you can talk about preview, a storyline, or anything. But I'm just going to simply sum up in seven minutes what I saw this week on Monday Night Raw. Welcome to Simply Summon Something. Let's go ahead and get started. <sighs> so, it started off, of course, with a double contract signing, which kind of surprised me when I considered that you think contract signing, control C, control V, aha, you would think that this actually would have been like in separate segments, that it just clashed all one very beginning. I feel like the number one thing most people know is with Sasha Banks, known for her look, but the fact she lost her shoes, I think people look way too close into that stuff. But for what it was, I mean, it gave him momentum towards the champion. McIntyre almost took his head off. Sasha Banks talking like a boss against Asuka. And we set up a mixed tag team main event for the uh, later of the night. Then we find Big Show, who walks across backstage with Garza, once again, frolics with feelings of his other female counterful cohorts, as he thinks he's going to give a rose to Charlie Russo. No, gives one to the female rep just Katar. He's an all-ladies man. Go figure. Anyway, Big Show comes out to the ring, and we find Garza and Andrade. They come out to try and get the better of him, and this turns into an immediate tag match with former Raw Tag Team Champions Ivar and Eric. And this went about as much as I expected, because when does Tag Team Wrestling matter? There's a bigger story here. It's Garza and Andrade that got the win here, but as we go later in the night, we find them also face Big Show in a handicap match, and literally, you see it finally starting to take hold what Selena and Garza might be doing. As Andrade was left behind and drive for a moment to get KO'd and lose. And 20% title, that can die. I really do not care about Kill Design or his Ninja Squadron, alright? Moving on. The biggest important thing I think on this show is definitely Seth as the Money Night Messiah and everything he's been doing, basically, for the greater good through these sacrifices at the expense of Rey Mysterio. And he asks the Mysterio and Dominic for forgiveness, but Mysterio instead says, What I'm gonna do to you is gonna be ten times worse than you did to me. I hope my son Dominic can forgive me what I'm gonna do for you. The impromptu tag match fall on that. Once again, Creole and Alistair Black trying to get some redemption on Ray's behalf. They fought on his behalf in a good tag team match, and in the end, chaos ensued around ringside, and the Monday Night Messiah and his disciple Murphy, they got the win. And also last statement, as he tried, once again, to use literally a mask of Ray on her brother Creole, who said, you wanna be a hero? I'm going to use you for the greater good as a sacrifice. Try to take his eye. I was about to prevent that. But Saffron still got the last laugh for stomping as he stomped Creel's face into the steel steps. We'll see what comes next from this. Uh, following this, we go into basically out of nowhere from, I guess, a backstage vignette. Ruby Riot, Payne Royce, they have a match. I keep thinking Payne Royce has incredible potential as a single star in WWE. She brought out a new move here that was very impressive to me with that spinning uh, brain buster. And Ruby Riot lost. Again. Sorry. Uh, that being said, we learn more about Lana and Natalia and how they're really becoming a cohesive uh, friendship duo. We'll see what that leads to. Uh, moving on from there, we have a uh, War of Words. There's a big show called Randy Orton. Rick Flair says, Randy Orton's the best, greatest wrestler of all time. You can't beat him. You're not on his level. Blah, blah, blah. Why is Rick Flair there considering what's going on with the world? By the way, I'm glad to see at least everybody in the audience is wearing a mask. Anyway, this, of course, got into that handicap match, as I said earlier. Not much more to say. You know we're getting Big Show versus Orton at the horror show. It's as simple as that. MVP still tries to reach out to be a manager for Apollo Crews as Apollo Crews United States Champion. But Apollo Crews wants nothing to do with it. Then they end up having one-on-one -on -one match. It makes the Lashley distraction. MVP does get the win, but they weren't done selling their statement there. As afterwards, Lashley, he got involved, applied the full Nelson lock. Only for, out of nowhere, Ricochet and Sir Alexander come in for the same. Starts an impromptu match between Ricochet and Bobby Lashley that was 10 times better than the match Ricochet had against Brock Lesnar at Country right after. And in the end, though, Ricochet, he still lost, but it was still a much better effort. I see now some factual warfare going on if MVP recruits Shelton Benjamin, and we might get a three on three. Maybe even Extreme Rules Horror Show. Only time will tell. Moving on from there, we go into the main event, the mixed tag team match between Sasha and Mac, excuse me, Sasha and Dolph Ziggler, <clears throat> Dolph Ziggler versus uh, Drew McIntyre and Asuka, champions versus challengers. Very good back and forth match, but honestly, I only cared about one match here. <clears throat> you can guess which one, as I only looked at Sasha Banks and Asuka, especially their exchange toward the end, where really they were trying to get each other in each other's submissions. Asuka lock, fake statement, Asuka lock, base statement, counter for counter for counter, and it was only on a slip roll up. Out of nowhere, that Sasha Banks got the title. Do not count Sasha Banks out. 
with Vincent Pritchard in charge of WWE solely now and the reins falling on them, it would not surprise me they put all the women's gold on literally Bailey and Sasha, as what seems to be the case, and maybe unite the women's championships and the divisions. We'll have to uh, wait and see. Overall, Monday Night Raw, Bruce Pritchard, Vince Man Air, it's still net to me, but I do enjoy what the Monday Night Messiah is doing as far as this and Ray. I expect this to be an epic clash when the two finally meet. It wins private those in an impromptu match at Extreme Rules uh, Horror Show. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Sasha Banks and Asuka. That is going to be probably my uh, match of the night. And even though they put up NXT's uh, Nikki Cross versus Asuka last week standing from NXT, finally on the YouTube as a full match, I think that was a nice little uh, vignette. As I look at everything else, I think about this. United States Championship finally has some ground to it, it seems, and a storyline coming out of it. There might be a six-man tag on the horizon, and I can honestly see MVP and Apollo Crews going after the United States Championship against each other at Extreme Rules with their cornermen, and Sheldon Benjamin being the guy that is third in MVP's uh, faction. But again, I'm just spitballing. Only time will tell. As I look at the women's division of Monday Night Raw, honestly, I don't know what's next for Ruby Riot at this point. She literally seems lost in the shuffle. I'm just waiting for Bianca Belair and Shayna Baszler to come back. No tag team champion, so we're trying to figure out, I guess, the tag team division still. That still seems to be on hold. Go figure. I don't really care about Big Show or it. It's a rival of the past, and again, this is Vince's WWE. He, of course, relies on the past, okay? I'm not sure if you can say he's necessarily pushing new stars, but the fact we've seen just Ricochet and Cedric out of nowhere, I need to see more from this. We already saw what Rick happened to Ricochet when Vince didn't care about him, and Cedric when Vince didn't care about him either. With that being said, I also think about this as we head into uh, next week, and maybe Friday night. Asuka and Sasha, they might have a conflict, and it would not surprise me if Aleister Black and Seth Rollins, they have a singles match again as we head towards freaking Extreme Rules Horror Show. What a horrible tagline, by the way. And in case you're wondering, I'll tell you this much, okay? What I'm going to tell you right now is I can see another VIP lounge where MVP talks about how Apollo Crews can benefit from me. After all, I beat him. Look at what I did with the great Lashley. I will say this, last year he's been taken more seriously now. So. Well, that's all I have to say. That's been about seven minutes. So, did you like Raw? Did you enjoy Raw? On a scale of 1 to 5, do you rate it? I rate it as a 3.5. Thank you for tuning into this first episode of Sip and Summon Something, where I give you my thoughts on what I watch and what I think might come next. Who knows what might be next? Support Nota Q, support wrestling, support wrestling, I'll it small. Let's grow as best for me together. Until next time, I just hope you all have a good night. From Seattle, hi everybody. Bye-bye.